What I'm going to do now with these two wing sections of the F14 Tomcat is just do some pre shading. Now, <clears throat> For pre-shading, traditionally, uh, most people will come along with a black. Um, and I'm going to use black for this, but I also want to try out some browns just to kind of show you the whole kind of transparency um, thing going on, which is how um, pre-shading works. Now, the first thing we want to do for pre-shading, um, you know, make sure we've got a nice prime surface. Um, in this um, video, I am basically using a bit of a homebrew thinners um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a bit of a 50-50 mix now uh, just remember you can use any kind of thinners for Vallejo, Vallejo thinners, Tamiya X20A, um, extra acrylics and we're just going to get our black in fact there's a bit too much in there than I'd like so I'm just spraying that through and I'm just going to add some of our nice um, Vallejo black like so Mix it up with a paintbrush just to make sure that the, uh, the thinners and the paint is all nicely mixed together, like so. And then what we want to do, we just want to test our flow and just make sure that our airbrush is all good. Uh, now, when it comes to pre-shading, what you want to try and remember is, is um, you might see photos of people who do all this um, black lines right and this is pre-shading now when you see pictures you might find that some people get a bit smart and they do it all really nice and neat and really uniform and kind of very square and it looks all fancy smanchy um, but what you gotta remember is you're gonna put your main coat on top of this and you want to put the main coat on in such um, say light um, layers that this black comes through transparent like to kind of give you a nice weathering effect um, but you only want it really to kind of come through lightly this black transparency effect that gives you the pre-shading so you don't have to be mega neat and the thing is about weathering as well weathering isn't uniform it isn't neat it isn't square it's very kind of random and um, messy because it's weathering right so what you want to do is not get too uptight about being neat in fact i could probably whack my air pressure down a little bit in fact i've just spilt if you ever have a spill like we've got here wipe it up because what's going to happen is it's going to drain right down to the needle end you're going to blast out the air and you're going to blob out all this nasty paint and gonna have a nice nasty blast of blob all over so get that wiped up like so and also when you're kind of moving along as well if you ever kind of feel like you're not quite getting the paint out it's because you're getting dried paint on your needle so always keep a bit of a kitchen paper towel to one side so that you can just keep wiping the end of your needle and what we're going to do is we just follow all our panel lines like so.
there we go all pre-shaded up and it's not mega neat at all really i mean if we have a nice little close look at this i mean we've got little bits of mistakes here and there and i've even had a slight bit of spidering even there but it's no big deal it all adds to the weathering flavor right so don't worry if you think crikey i can't do that it's too complex or too fine you don't have to be neat and i'll show you how much you don't actually have to be neat one second there we go whoops i've made a big mistake here as you can see i can kill that out later and i'll show you that getting killed out later um but what i want to do now is i want to have a little look at doing a bit of a mottled kind of effect so i'm just changing my airbrush around one second right again let's get some thinners all right let's get a bit of a 50 50 mix and i'm gonna go for this um us air force brown by valeggio uh, uh 71125 right gonna get this 50 50 mix and what we're going to try and do is try and uh, give um, a nice bit of a dirty um, sort of mottled look to this now to add also to the pre-shading all right so quickly mix that up like right, so with a paintbrush we can check see if our flow is all good and what we what we want to do is very just closely and finally just sort of do this kind of light sort of pattern going on a bit like Tetris, um, kind of T's, F's, and um, sort of like a bit of an Aztec kind of thing going on. I think I need a bit more air pressure there. There we go. So it gives us a bit of a, a motley kind of thing going on. Right, just like so, and we can just get into all the kind of inside the panels, not like in uh, on the panel lines or the rivet lines, you know, we're just getting in there inside the panels. Right, and hopefully this will give us, you know, different kind of tones, different types of colours, um, and with the whole kind of like a nice transparent kind of... Um, coat that we're going to put on we're going to slowly build it up transparently until we get the black and this brown coming through just the way we want it so i'm going to continue with this and then we're going to look at um, putting the top coat on As you can see our wing now is all done I've done all the rest of the model and what we want to do now is we want to start putting on our main coat and let this pre-shading do its work um, now hopefully as you can see it's not some super duper neat precise brilliant spray job it's just a quick blast round going into all our recess panel lines and then I've gone round with a bit of brown which um, the brown if you're a beginner to spraying I'd probably recommend don't even do our little bits of brown um, pre-shade here just stick with the black don't worry about being on neat that is what you want to be doing right so let's um i'm going to be using for our uh, top coat here is h308 which is um aquarius hobby color um and what we're going to do i'm going to get some of the uh, homebrew thinners here and we're going to make a bit of a 50 50 mix here so we're just going to pour into our puller color cup about a 50 50 mix oh, there we go put the lid on paintbrush is a bit dirty there we go and we're just going to mix in with a paintbrush both our thinners and paint and there we go right, so that's looking good let's check our 
flue. Let's just make sure our paint is coming out just the way we want it. It's not looking too bad. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit more thinners, right, and maybe make it a bit of a, um, shall we say, about not a 50 50 mix. Normally, I'd say a 50 50 mix, but when it comes to pre shading, if you could make your paint a little bit thinner, maybe about 60% um, uh, thinners to 40% paint, this way you make your paint thinner, you make it a bit more transparent. So when we do come along to um, spray on our coat now, it's going to take a couple of coats to go through. So let's just spray on our first, oh we're going to need more air pressure. There we go. And what we're going to do, we're going to spray on our first coat like so. Nice, even, light misty coat. Don't forget our leading edges. And what you can see that has just happened there by putting on that first light misty coat is it's starting, the black and the brown is starting to fade. Our paint that we've just put down, our um, H308, is very transparent. You can see that black and that brown really coming through, right? So now it's had a bit more time to dry. What we can do now is really give it a nice, decent coat now, a, a normal, nice, light coat All right, and we'll just dry that back a bit now as you can see that coat has done the same thing as our first coat it is um, it's gone on quite nice and transparent so that our black and our brown is still showing through right and this is what we want to do for the next couple of coats keep at it until we get it the way we want it There we go, that's had now a third coat. Now, it might be taking a couple of coats, but trust me, I'd rather do a lot more coats and keep my pre-shading, because what could happen is, if we come in with paint that's too thick, we could put one or two coats on here, and we could completely kill off the pre-shading. So all that work you've done in pre-shading is gone, because you've put too much of a, um, a coverage down with your um, H308 um, so just bear that in mind it's good to come in thin now because we're really starting to get to the end here what you want to do as well is maybe uh, thin your paint down even more right, and we'll just mix that in now the reason why you thin your paint down more is because um, the thinner your paint the more transparent it is um, and the more unlikely it is that you're going to come along and just kill off all that nice pre-shading because we're really close here I mean if we kind of go a bit too far with our spraying now we could end up killing it off so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put on our last coat and this is a thinner coat of paint so we shouldn't really kill it off but be careful anyway Right, and we've had a little blob of paint just in the corner there. Leave it alone, let it dry. Uh, but we're talking about pre-shading at the moment. Now, if you can remember, there was a big black mistake I did there just to kind of prove a point how I um, kind of exaggerated a big mistake and did a big blob of black there. 
you know, I mean, you can't even see that now, which is the whole point. This is what I mean about um, you don't have to worry about making mistakes or being on needs when it comes to pre-shading because when we put this coat on here, it blends all those mistakes in and it just blends into a nice bit of weathering. And actually now looking at that after that nice little light, very transparent coat, I mean actually that is just looking just right. That is all nice and ready now for coming along and doing some um, bleaching and post shading and a load of other fancy spraying that I'm actually going to do with this F14. Thank you. 